Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. May I invite all of you all to stand up and keep your left hand to your chest and raise your right hand towards me and pray for this sinner called to be a sharer of Christ. I'm just a sinner in the hands of the Lord. I'm a tool and the Lord will uh, be uh, using me to give his good news, to share the good news with you. So please pray over. Thank you. You may take your seats now. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. There's a battle going on. The battle between head and the stomach. After the lunch. It is a graveyard session. If the head wins, everyone will be awake, alert and attentive in getting the best out of the discussion. By any chance, if the stomach wins, what happens? Strange noises coming from Maligawa at the timber mills can be heard. <laughs> so you have an awakening challenge to be awake and to ensure that your neighbor is also awake. If you see your neighbor nodding, prick your neighbor as a social service. So we need to have that uh, attitude in terms of getting the best out of the a little time that we have got together. Um, have you enjoyed the day so far? Has the day been uh, meaningful? Yes. Has the Lord touched your life so far? Yes. I'm sure it's a wonderful experience when you come as a family to enjoy the blessings of the Lord. And uh, my task has been made much simpler by the uh, blessed um, sharing so far by Father Joby and our wonderful sister and of course the Holy Mass. So it's all about Christ-centric family. It's all about focusing on Christ in our families. Father, mother, brother, sister, children, parents. How we ensure that the Christ is the center. Not anything else. Not social media. Not what the world says. Not what the devil is tempting us. No, Christ has to be our center. So let me propose three simple words or three simple acronyms for us to take away from today and then to whisper them in our lives in order to get that Christ-centered experience in our families. Cool, calm and care. Say with me out loud. Cool, calm and care. So why cool? When there's a lot of red hot temperature around, there's a lot of anger, there's a lot of jealousy, there's a lot of tension, there's a lot of anxiety, uncertainty. We are sitting on a volcano in a way. Because there's economic crisis, there's social crisis, there's a lot of unrest. And when things are really, really hot around, the Lord is inviting us to be cool. So why cool? C-O-O-L. Christ over our lives. Christ over our lives. Shall you say out loud? C-O-O-L means? Can't hear even out loud? Christ over our lives. Turn to your neighbor and say, cool, Christ over our lives. And they say, when the going gets tough, tough gets going. And tough times never last, but tough people do. This is a time of that toughness with Christ. To be solidified with the values of Christ. To be in the good news. So we got to be cool. When the things are all topsy-turvy, we need to be cool in experiencing Christ over our lives. Sometimes we forget the Christ and we go here and there, we run haywire, we get chaotic and we get fatigued. We are full of pressure, we are full of stress, we are full of anxiety. In fact, that's why they say we are living in a VUCA world, V-U-C-A. It's all about having uh, volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity. It's all about VUCA around us, surrounding us. So that's where we need to be cool. Christ over our lives. Husbands and wives, you've got to be cool. When the husband comes with really in a bad, hot temper, with a clash in office and coming back with that tension and fizzles out that anger in front of the family, you've got to be cool. 
and when the wife is so upset about the day's proceedings and waiting to tell the whole uh, series of events when the husband comes tired and the husband is so annoyed when the wife goes on the real reporting like a media report of the whole day's proceedings you got to be cool and when the kids come home after the schools all challenges all problems what the teachers have tortured them and so on and when they keep saying they are challenges you got to be cool so that's the way we live with christ christ centric family christ over our lives shall we say once again christ over our lives so we learn a new acronym today cool so every time you face this challenging experience whisper to yourself i am cool because christ over our lives that's the starting point as a family we need to have that christ centered experience so i think the best way to uh, live with christ is to spread the good news within the family and as a family outside the family so shall we listen to the good news shall we listen to if you have your uh, bibles please turn to a uh, gospel according to st luke luke chapter 6 verse 31 chapter 6 verse 31 Luke 6:31 I'll give you a few seconds to turn to the relevant page I think it's appearing on the screens as well Luke chapter 6 verse 31 What does the Lord tell us All right shall we say once again do to others as you would have them do to you to give the context this particular advice comes after a long sermon with a massive crowd who came to get healed and who uh, and who came to get heard the good news and the lord gives them a recipe do's and don'ts do this don't do that and after a long list of things finally he comes to a point where how do you love your enemies how do you should treat your enemies how do you should consider others how you should deal with others so he gives this fine advice i am sure it is very much relevant to families it's very much applicable to families shall you all read once again do to others as you would have them do to you i come from a management background in management we use a very simple term to summarize the whole thing it is becoming increasingly important and we see managers around the globe who are not practicing this a lot it's all about empathy empathy so what is empathy is it similar to sympathy no sympathy means what being sorrowful being sad but empathy means what anyone who can shout out loud what is empathy empathy looking from others point of view looking from another angle and in english we say uh, getting into others shoes and walk like others do we need empathy in our family lives to be christ centric definitely we need to be empathetic towards one another husband should be empathetic towards wife and the wife should be empathetic towards husband and parent should be empathetic towards children and children should be empathetic towards parents that's where we need to practice what the good lord invites us to do do to others as you would have them do to you by nature we are self centered not christ centered we want me myself and i as a starting point me first and others second that's the selfish nature of humans and as one research says uh, managers around the world they are very very weak in having empathy they always say my way is highway my way is right way you have to follow my way because that's the way and you don't listen to others if that is the attitude of a husband god bless the family if that is the attitude of the wife god bless the family you need to be a good listener to begin with empathy begins with listening i am sure god has given us two ears and one mouth for a particular purpose isn't it so imagine if we had two mouths and one ear the whole world would be jabbering jabbering and jabbering so there's an intention why we are given two ears and one mouth isn't it to to listen more and to talk less 
Is that what we are doing in our families? We impatiently wait till others finish and to continue and to resume our talking. We are talking and talking and talking. Verbal diarrhea. So today let's take a decision. I think the Lent season is a good uh, season to do some sacrifices, isn't it? Sacrifices is not only with the food. I think uh, Pope Francis gave us a list of sacrifices. Refrain from, abstain from these, these, these. So one thing is excessive talking. Excessive talking. To be a better listener than a talker. If we all can become better listeners, if we can look from others' point of view, the world will be a better place to live. So it reminds me a story. I wonder whether I should tell that. Can I tell that? Is it all right? But you need to visualize. A dark night, a ship is sailing along. And the captain in the top deck is looking at the front. Imagine, try to visualize. So captain is looking at the front. And a bright light coming directly towards the ship. And as usual, captain takes the megaphone and starts talking. This is Captain Smith speaking. Please change your direction. Pat came the reply. This is Peter speaking. Please change your direction. Captain got annoyed. Who the hell is that fellow asking me to change my direction? I'm the captain of this ship. He took the megaphone and raised the voice and said, This is Captain Smith speaking. Please change your direction. Came the calm, quiet voice again. This is Peter speaking. Please change your direction. Captain is now getting really annoyed. His blood is starting to boil. That fellow doesn't know who I am. I'm carrying cannons in my ship. And he took the megaphone and angrily started screaming, this is Captain Smith speaking for the final time, immediately change your direction, otherwise I would start firing cannons. Pat came the calm, quiet voice, this is Peter speaking from the lighthouse, I can't change my direction, please change your direction. Are we all so missing lighthouses in our lives? My brother, my sister, my son, my daughter, this is the challenge. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Are we also missing lighthouses? The captain assumed that the light came from a battleship, enemy ship, pirate ship. He didn't have the wisdom. He didn't have the empathy to look at other possibilities, other opportunities, other perspectives. This is what is ruining our family lives. It is not being Christ-centered. It's being self-centered. It's being ego-centered. We are very egoistic, isn't it? Ego stands for aging growth out. Ego. Me, myself and I. Others have to be subservient to me. I am the superior. Husband likes chocolate cake, but the poor wife likes strawberry cake. Husband brings two pounds of chocolate cake and says, I like chocolate cake, therefore, though, uh, therefore you also should eat chocolate cake. Monkey with chocolate cake, topit kapiao, chocolate cake. That's not going to work. That's not going to work. That's not empathy, isn't it? That's not Empathy. You got to be sensitive to others' needs. You got to be aware of others' needs. I know so many uh, marriages, hopefully not Catholic marriages, are ending up in divorces because they lack empathy. I know a photographer of mine who used to cover uh, weddings and that is his main business. And he said he used to get an advance from the couple and he covered the uh, wedding and he do the, some, uh, what do you call this, some... Uh, photo shots and then uh, before doing the story book album he takes the uh, contact sheets to the couple and they pick and choose the relevant photographs and now he says the new trend when he uh, go with the contact sheets in search of the couple they are already separated <laughs> and he says hereafter I am taking full amount before the wedding because no guarantee <laughs> see the point see the point where we are heading where is empathy so remember Christ over our lives Cool. Shall we say once again? Christ over our lives. Cool. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And again, a connecting word. When you are cool, you tend to be calm. You tend to be calm. Why? C A L M stands for Christ always leads me. Christ always leads me. He's my leader. He's my guide. He's my good shepherd. I'm a sheep knowing the voice of my good shepherd. C-A-L-M. Shall you all say? C-A-L-M stands for Christ always leads me. Turn to your neighbor and say C-A-L-M. Come, Christ always leads me. 
I hope your neighbor is still awake, alert, and hopefully alive. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Shall I give a big round of applause to our mighty Lord? And based on what Jesus Christ preached, his later joined disciple who really spread the good news around the world, St. Paul. St. Paul writes to Ephesians in elaborating further what Christ said to the disciples. Shall we turn in your Holy Bible? St. Paul's letter to uh, Thessalonians. Sorry, yeah, St. Paul's letter to uh, Ephesians. St. Paul's letter to Ephesians. Chapter 4, verses, uh, sorry, chapter 4, verse 32. Chapter 4, verse 32. 4, verse 32. Ephesians 4, 32. Shall you all read out? Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. See the power of St. Paul's preaching. The power of his sharing the extended good news with Ephesians. I am sure that message is directly relevant to all families. Shall we all read once again with conviction? Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. They say, love is for giving. That's why it is forgiving. Love is always for giving. It's selfless, not selfish. That's why forgiving is something extremely important for the sustenance of family life. If husband is not forgiving the wife, another family. If the wife is not forgiving the husband, again, another family. If the parents can't forgive the children, another family. If the children can't forgive the uh, parents, another family. Sometimes the husbands are very notorious in certain cases. There was an executive husband who was very having all sort of uh, nonsensical behaviors and the wife was very suspicious. She was very observant and she was monitoring what the husband is up to. And husband went for a party and the wife is now calling and checking what the husband is up to. And husband used to send text messages. And he was so thrilled with the nice party, sing song and dance in high in spiritual stuff, not this spiritual, the other spiritual stuff. And then the wife texting, how are you doing? And the husband sent the text message and he wanted to say, I wish you were here. And when he sent the message, the wife got wild and mad and he ordered a cab. He ordered a, I mean, she ordered a uh, Uber cab and straight away went to the party setting and started slapping the husband. Why? Husband in a rush put, I wish, instead of saying, I wish you were here, he has typed, I wish you were her. He was missing. That E made a big difference. Instead of saying, I wish you were here, he texted, I wish you were her. That made a big difference in the family. So you have to be forgiving one another. You might make a mistake in typing something, texting something. So you have to be having that forgiving mindset. If you are not forgiving, because we always say the Lord's prayer, isn't it? You forgive us, therefore please forgive our trespasses, as you forgive those who sin against. See, always our role model, our guide, our master is always willing to forgive. He has a big heart. In the cross, he stretched his arms and said, I am here to forgive you. With my holy sacrifice, I have forgiven you. Isn't it? Isn't that amazing? Shall you close our eyes and pause for a while? And see Christ in the cross. We have started the Lent season, which the pinnacle would be the Easter. With Good Friday, we are experiencing deeply Christ in the cross, the crucifixion. Visualize the Christ in the cross with arms stretched. He says, How much I love you, revealed by my cross. How much I loved you, revealed by my cross. The way I died for you, God died for us. He revealed his love, unconditional love, unending love, unstoppable love. 
to all of us no matter who we are no matter where we are no matter what we are doing his uncondi- his unconditional love is always with us in our families he's forgiving us he's loving us abundantly immerse in that abundant abundance of god's love try to visualize that you are filling with god's love you're filling with god's mercy recently i went to a church and i saw a beautiful statement near the divine mercy um, statue god's mercy is much much bigger than my mistakes open your eyes god's mercy is much much bigger than my shall you all say out loud god's mercy is much much bigger than my mistakes that's the loving god we have that's the unconditionally loving god we have so as a husband do i have a right to reprimand my wife as a wife do i have a right to reprimand by husband so love is forgiving that's why it is forgiving and it says beautifully just as in christ god forgave you the way christ forgave us we need to forgive one another we human beings are always tempted to do mistakes tempted to do sins so today the tempter tempted jesus christ three times we heard in the gospel listen it so it's coming over and over again every day we have temptations after temptations after temptations on one side we have devil on one side we have the world and on the other side we have the flesh we have the flesh so we got to be aware only way to survive is to be filled with god's love to be immersed with god's love so we got to be cool we got to be calm so now tell me what is cool and then what is calm christ always leads me believe in that experience a touching experience christ always leads me i am not alone as a husband i am not alone as a wife i am not alone as a parent i am not alone as a child we are all together being led by the mighty lord the mighty jesus christ he is with us he is in us so i remember this beautiful meaningful prayer we uh, reside in uh, i think it was in uh, the novena for perpetual help on uh, wednesdays we say lord you are in front of us guiding us lord we are within us sustaining us lord uh, you are above us blessing us you are behind us guiding us isn't it i mean what a wonderful experience lord is always in front of us giving us the right direction and lord is always behind us protecting us carefully protecting us and lord is above us blessing us all the time and lord is within us sustaining us ensuring that we sustain the journey of life the long journey of life so god is always with us jesus is always with us isn't there anything happier than that when jesus christ is with us when we are part of him he is with us so why should we worry about anything else and why worry when jesus is with us aren't you happy do i see happy faces so sleepy faces then shall you give a big round of applause with happiness so remember how we have to manage how we have to lead how we have to sustain christ centered life with christ being the focal point is to have empathy towards one another empathy and some people complain empathy isn't it a weakness no i would argue it's a strength looking from another's point of view is not a weakness it's a strength i mean not having the empathy is the real weakness so sometimes it can make or break relationships it can damage affairs it can affect your mutual respect to one another so it reminds me of a song sung by late blind singer henry caldera i'll say in single and translate that into english midule sudu velithale miri vedi sangalaka salakun dekka masita sakeki upudinne there are some footsteps in my garden and i feel suspicious maniwase nathi athare kaurunno pamina tibi 
කවුරු දාවේ නිවසට කවුරු දාවේ සාමාන්‍ය සාමාන්‍ය වෙලාවෙ enter my house in my absence who the hell that person could be බිරිඳට සොහිරන් නොමැත මා සොහිරු දසනේ පිනි මගේ යහළුවෙක් නිවසට ආවත my wife doesn't have any brothers my only brother is not well i wonder whether one of my friends would have entered my house i don't know whether that fellow would have crept in are ehema wat dan na sure ne so he started becoming suspicious uta watena oda mehema karanda komoda man uta sahalake u mehema da mata sahalake you get wild and mad and angry and say i'll kill him and her and myself triple murders <laughs> fortunately you had empathy so what has really happened මගේ පාවහන් පළඳා සුරතල් පුතු ඇවිදිනවා සිංගිති දෙතොල් අතරින් සුදු සිනහ මත වුණ ඉට් ඉස් මයි සන් හු වොස් වෙයරින් මයි චූස් ඇන්ඩ් වෝකින් ඇලෝන්ග් ඉන් ද ගාඩන් දෙයාෆෝ ද ෆුට් ස්ටෙප්ස් ඉමේජින් ඉෆ් හි ඩිඩ් නොට් හැව් එම්පති ඩිසාස්ටර් ඉස් නෙට් අටර් ඩිසාස්ටර් සී ද පවර් ඔෆ් එම්පති යු ගොට් ටු එම්පතයිස් විත් වන් නැදර් ඩු නොට් ඇසියුම් තින්ග්ස් seek the truth don't jump into conclusions lot of disasters can happen if you jump into conclusions and then take decisions on the spot rushing into decisions jumping into conclusions that will be the ruining of your family christ is separated and you take your decisions based on your feelings based on your emotions based on your gut and then that might not be the truth that might not be the reality that might be only what we have assumed as reality so assuming is not good they say if you write assume a s s u m e make an ass of you and me you make a fool of yourself you be stupid because it's not right it is not the correct thing that's why you need to be close to god you need to be close to christ you need to be led by holy spirit so the third word i would propose in that way acronym when you have cool and calm you need to be care you need to take care of others in the family so care stands for christ awakens real empathy so what is care christ awakens real empathy say once again christ awakens real empathy and turn to your neighbor and say care means christ awakens real empathy i'm going to give you 3 minutes have a neighborly chat they say love thy neighbor at least have a chat with your neighbor how these three words are relevant to my family if your husband is sitting next to you if your wife is sitting next to you great praise the lord and you can have a 3 minute chat cool calm and care how these three words are relevant to our family can we do that can we do that hulam bhala can we do that are you willing to do that yes. are you really sure yes. are you saying yes because i'm asking you I thought you would say yes to that as well. Give a big round of applause to everyone. Have a three minutes neighborly chat. Have a three minutes neighborly chat. So did you enjoy the session so far? Yes. Has it been something meaningful? Yes. I think then all glory and uh, praise to God. Give a big round of applause to everyone. Sh- shall we put our hands together and say a prayer? Close your eyes. and put your hands together and take a deep breath breathe in retain and breathe out breathe in retain and breathe out experience the presence of god in you within you holy spirit within you we got jesus christ sacramentally into our hearts into our soul into our body Jesus is with us around us Let's pray Please uh, repeat what I say as a collective prayer Abba Father we thank you for this wonderful moment for this great experience for this blessed day for bringing us together in making blessed families Christ centered families Christ focused families help us as fathers as mothers as children as parents to always experience your presence with us and to be aware that 
you are guiding us and to surrender ourselves totally to you and we need to say i surrender myself to you take care of everything lord i surrender my family to you take care of everything we trust you lord jesus be with us always and guide us to the truth we ask this through our lord jesus christ amen amen amen